What's up, everybody? My name's Jan, so today we're going to be diving into a Shade Wing Army deck or a Shade Wing combo deck. You know, it lies somewhere in between there, but it's going to be a Shade Wing Lorit. Lorit? Deck. It's a three mana 2 2 flying human warlock. Uh, whenever another creature you control with flying dies, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Now, some of these terms and phrases and things within this card may sound familiar because it's actually going to interact pretty well with uh, some of our old friends from Mono White or, you know, Orzhov in general, the, the whole sacrifice fam uh, family, you know. We have Mothra, Supersonic Queen, 4 mana, 3, 4, flying, whenever a creature you control without flying, now it's returned to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it. Now, this gives you access to a lot of flying creatures, so Shadewing can keep giving you counters because, you know, all these creatures down here. Then we also have a Bosri's Lieutenant, which reads, you know, whenever it enters battlefield, you gain plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Furthermore, whenever Bosri's Lieutenant or another creature you control dies, if it had a plus one, plus one counter on it, create a 2-2 White Knight creature token with Vigilance. Um, so obviously, if you're putting counters on things and they're dying... Um, okay, so put a plus one, plus one counter on one of your creatures, right? And then it dies, so you get to bring it back with Mothra. And you get to get a 2-2 with Bosri's Lieutenant. This is, of course, ifs and buts and candies and nuts. But, again, we're, we're playing that in my mind, right? Every time I go through a combo or one of these, like, hey, look at what we can do, potentially. It's like, okay, come on, right? So, anyways, you have both of them down. You can get the 2-2. You can get the creature right back onto the battlefield. Except now it's also flying. So, whenever it dies the second time and it has flying, you get to get it put the plus one plus one counter on something which allows you to create another knight and sort of have this endless army going on that's that's the idea behind the deck anyways now somebody has been suggesting this to me for quite a while i i think jared is the name on the youtube account yeah you know i i read a lot of names i interact with a lot of people like just throughout my normal day being a human being so names are tough for me y'all know that in general uh so if I got it wrong, you know, just correct me. But I know you've been on about this combo, uh, and I'm, I can't mean to tell you like, hey, I'm I'm trying for it up here. You know, I'm thinking on it. Um, it's just uh, I kept trying to make it a loop, and then I was like, wait a minute, chance. It doesn't have to be a loop. It can just be a cool combo. It can just be a cool little piece where you gain a lot of value from it. You know. And so this is the deck that we came up with. You know, uh, after I've been ranting for all three minutes. <laughs> uh but no a lot of these cards y'all know and we know them very well right they've been around for a minute alcelid selfless sacrifice protect your stuff destruction here uh card draw here because you know you want a little sack outlet here and there for whenever you're dealing with things like this where you can get value back out of it and you know let's be real village rights is <laughs> it's a lot of value uh malik here to help keep your bigger creatures on the board because of course if you go to play a bosri's lieutenant generally the opponent's going to be like mm, no so you know if if you don't happen to have your creatures then a little malik here action and it's a land so helps allow you to not play as many just basic lands and still have that value of protection right uh clearing odds spit spit <laughs> Spit it out, Chance. Clarion Spirit allows you to create uh, flying creatures, which can help with Shade Wing, just separate of the whole combo, and it can allow you to help flood the board, which is nice because we do have a Felidar retreat. So if you're not hitting your Bosries or your Mothra, there's a retreat uh, waiting for you, right? Humiliate, fantastic card. Love this card. Great card. Um, the end. Silver Quill Silencer. I think we should have went for something different in this deck. I was, I've been wanting to try this card out for a minute. It's it's okay. You have to really know the meta. You have to really know what your opponent could be playing. And uh, even still then, you know, even still then, there's so much removal. There's so many spells that get used in the meta right now. It's just unrealistic to be like, well, I'll just play it down and name Heartless Act. And then they're like, well, I can also use Blood Chiefs, Thirst, right? Or uh, Eliminate or whatever. Humiliate, is that one? I don't know. No, 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 Humiliate is what I have. Eliminate is, is what I'm thinking of. So, honestly, that gives you two extra creatures to uh, play with, which, trust me, there are some much better creatures for this whole combo or deal here that you might want to go for. Uh, anyways, Vanishing Verse, big fan of it. Instant Speed, Exile. Um, and you can hit, you know, Dragons with this, Bone Crushers, Love Strucks, uh, Imbrick Leaves, Great Hinges, it's, it's a really good card. 
Uh, it's got Glaive Apparition, great creature, as we all know. Woe Strider gives you the sack outlet. So once, once, <laughs> so once you're in your combo, you can sort of, you know, activate it at whim, so to speak. Uh, Agadames to help you bring back all of this beautiful stuff. Baleful Mastery for some targeted removal. Felidar in case you don't hit these two. And, well, we've already dove into those two. Uh, if you don't have the Triomes, don't worry about it. I just like the Triomes as it gives us access to both white and black mana. And we can cycle them, so it's like, yeah. And they allow you to get down your Snarls untapped because they have, you know, plains and swamps within themselves. Anyways, um, also, if you're going to play this deck and you're playing it like trying to play seriously, I would probably cut this down to like two at max and maybe cut this down to two. So that frees you up about four cards or you know, maybe only two cards if you're not like me and you, <laughs> you like to stick to 60. But anyways, hope you all have been enjoying this deck tech breakdown. I know it was a little bit of a longer one. I just wanted to get all the points across and you know here recently i've been doing this little ramble rant thing where i just go off on side tangents i don't know if that made sense anyways leave a like down below if you're enjoying the video so far comment on what your favorite part or section of this deck may be or a future combo for us to play because y'all know me i take a lot of uh filtered decks from the comments just because I, I like to play different style of decks and y'all always have more interesting decks than you know the oh what's the top tier meta so Keep them coming, basically, is what I'm saying. Anyway, subscribe for more awesome content from yours truly. And without further ado, let's go play a Shadewing Army and, you know, see what happens. Isleth. Is that a Lilith? Isleth? I, I can dig it. We're going to keep this. We get to go first. Uh, we got some, you know, you know some one mana things to do. And a Snarl that we can actually activate. So, let's go. I think I do drop Selfless here. That way, when we drop Silver, silver Quill, we can actually protect her. Problem is, you kind of need information when you're dropping Silver Quill. Silver? Oh boy. How about we just call her the Silencer? Y'all know me, sometimes just words don't hurt with the, my mouth. Any hoosers? Yeah, all we have right now is the fact that they have green and white mana. Let's get a better look at their hand. What do you have over here, huh? Okay, yeah, see, you see, now I have some Swallow Hole. Ooh, that would be a hard one to really get around with that. <clears throat> so they have Scavenger Goose that's going to be coming down. I don't think we want them to have Scavenger Goose. Banishing Light is bad as well. But we might can protect against that. I don't really mind any of that stuff. I think I take those. Who knows? We'll see. Y'all let me know down below. Should I have taken those or maybe a more valuable card? Ooh. Well. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to take the Bosri. We have creature targeted removal and stuff like that. I think I think this is the way we should go. We'll see, though. We shall see. I would like to see a few more lands. I know we have 25 in the deck, I think. Drawn two is okay. Let's go. The game's on my side this morning. All right, so we already have double white here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a black mana so that way we have double black access, right? And then we go Auslid here because they have the banishing, right? And this allows our selfless, our teeny tiny little doggo to just keep smacking them down. <laughs> now we could go on the defensive, I suppose. I don't know. They could also just go for a swallow hole, right? 
didn't think about that. Maybe we should have stayed on the defensive. We're, we're not near our combo quite yet. <laughs> on this next turn, we can get down Silver Quill, Silencer. Look at that. I just got to go slower. My mouth my mouth wants to go 90, 90 miles an hour. In my, in my brain, sorry, wants to go 90 miles an hour. My mouth is like, chance. Stop. <laughs> Let me catch up. So maybe I'll start talking real slow. But the, the problem is, here, here's the problem. When you talk slow, and you're from the south, and you got to draw. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can think about what happens there. Hmm. That's sorcery speed. Let's go. We got this. No swallow hole for you. Now I can go for the Silver Quill, name that, and put down Selfless. Sounds like a play. Alright, and now we're essentially sacrificing this Selfless. <laughs> you know, not in the traditional sense, but in the Silver Quill sense. I got an eye on you. I slith. I slith. <laughs> Alright, I'll stop. What I really need is a drink of water. What I've actually been doing here recently, in case anyone's interested in, you know, I don't know, little me. I've been drinking, uh, well, this morning it's not a full cup, but I've been drinking a uh, full to half cup of, uh, We have eight damage on this next turn, if I can let this one live. They're only dealing four. I say we let it happen. Um, of the, of the like, the smoothie mixes, you know, that, that has all the fruits and stuff blended up. Because I'm not going to lie, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of apples and veggies and all that stuff. Like, I like it, don't get me wrong. But if somebody's like, hey, Chance, do you want to... This is gonna sound really bad, but if you want a you want a Reese's peanut butter cup or you want an apple, I'm gonna be like, uh, yeah, you know, I, no, I guess I'll I guess I'll take the Reese's. Anyways, we're gonna resolve this. I don't really have any like I don't. I guess I can sack you and go there. You know what I mean? Just negate that. <laughs> I didn't realize that that's how that would work, but hey, I'm happy about it. We got to draw the card. It's a selfless. We have a village rights. I can deal four. They're down to two. That sounds spicy. I, I thought I could. I thought I could get down Basri's lieutenant this turn, but I cannot. So bam, bam. I do want to save enough for village rights because that's that's big value. But it's hard to turn away from a woe shrata. How about we? Yeah, you know what? Let, let's just save for the village rights. Get down another selfless. Super protect ourselves. And, uh, yeah. They shouldn't attack here, right? That'd be crazy. Alright, they're attacking with one. We pass. We pass. Do I go to my turn or do I sack? You know what I mean? Do I sack one of the selfless? Is... Is... No, because if I find no, if I find removal, I'm gonna feel I'm gonna feel stupid. But let's go. <laughs> Hopefully, they don't have instant speed interaction in that one singular card that they that they have there. But you know, Boop. next and all in, get them, Johnny. Ah, Castle Hard Bell, you make me sick. All right, so they're gonna go conclave to selfless, and what, what are you doing? Oh, I guess they can't really afford, right? <laughs> I'm silly. This is all right though. We'll take out their conclave. They're down to one life, three life. I don't know how magic works. Y'all know me. I'm constantly forgetting the game. <laughs> when you're trying to be funny and quippy and like pay attention to what's going on and play your deck, some sometimes you run into problems because you're like, you know. I, I know how to play the game. You know, that, that's been on autopilot for for a year or so, which is why y'all see me make some of the mistakes I make, because 
playing on autopilot. Hey, let's go. That's a Basri Lieutenant waiting to happen. So if I swing all in here, what do they do? Create another token with Castle Ardenville. One there, one there, one there. All right, well, you don't, you know, put the pressure. We'll see how it turns out. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. So. I think this is just the easy play. The easy correct play, you know what I mean? Take out all their creatures, play down another creature for myself, as if I didn't have enough. They are back to four life, so I'm not gonna lie, they're hanging in there. And there they go. <laughs> GG, Iceland, that was fun. Alrighty, <laughs> NDH, gonna be, I, I gotta stop using that as my intro. Like we, we need a, a different transition into my matches, you know? Getting tired of saying, all right, all right, all right, you know what I mean? I'm sure you know what I mean. Y'all are, are the viewers. If anyone's getting tired of it. So what's going on here? I thought it was a mono red. Thank goodness it's not. It's probably one of those weird dragon decks, which is unfortunate. Because I don't know those as well as what I probably should. Um, but that's all right. You know, we, we have up to four lands here. Um, we have the Shade Wing and the Basri's Lieutenant. So that, you know, could... Yeah, the only unfortunate thing with this is it says whenever another creature. Uh, anyways, if we can get a one mana spell, two mana spell somewhere in here, we might can go ahead and proc Clarion, which might give us a creature to use the counters and all that. You know, I'm not going to lie. I tried to force this as like a loop for the longest time, and I just I just don't think it it is a loop. Like, you can not you can make a loop, you know what I mean? If you want to make a loop, go make a loop. <laughs> uh... I think throwing this one out there is a little ambitious given we don't have anything to interact with it. So we're just playing a three mana two two at this point. I think playing a Woe Strider is is much much more pog right now. So So what we're gonna do, if they have a bone crusher, which I could yeah, I could see them playing the bone crusher. They look like the type. Oh no 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 no. They have Zerda. We have to remember that. Their creatures can only consist of creatures that have activated abilities, right? Bone Crusher's not that. Right? I don't I don't think the adventure cards are activated abilities. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but you know. Just off the, the tippity top of my head, I don't I don't think. Any hoosers. Uh let's go ahead and grab some additional black mana. That actually gives us access to this uh this Agademes. Actually, Agademes, access. I love alliteration. Anyways, I don't think we play Bosri's Lieutenant here because well, y'all got something funky going on over there. I tell you what, I'm just gonna swing in first. You, you, you're making me a little worried. So you know, let's just go with this. Oh, they just take it. They have counter magic, don't they? So if I go to play this, they're probably just gonna counter it. Okay. Well, tell you what, I'd rather lose this to counter than the Bosri. Oh no, no counter. What's going on here? Maybe they had uh, some kind of destruction spell and they were like, oh, you know, spin that four mana and don't have access to Alcelid. But I was smart at them. Or maybe they had nothing and I'm, you know, yeah, maybe they had nothing. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, nope, nope. Stop it, Chance. Stop it. Here we go. It's Vigo. Good. Thank you. At least I made it work this time. Anyways, we're going to keep... <laughs> Mostly because I spent so long in that intro bit for the name that I feel a little bad <laughs> for uh, for the opponent. There we go. If I can use the mute button correctly. I was going to cough, but then I was like, Chance, you're still talking. Don't hit the mute button. <laughs> Alright, so turn one, we don't have a play. Easy. Easy. Get down the triome. Now, you can cycle them later, but it also, it's just... You know, it gives you access to both. So, mm. 
I don't trust myself to entirely know what they have going on over there. So I'm just going to drop an Alice Lid this turn. So, like I said before, the funky thing with Silver Quill is you, you got to know what they're playing a little. You got to get a little bit of info, you know? Let them, let them play something. One thing. And then you can... Uh, Alright, well... I actually could have guessed that, you know? I, I thought about dropping you and naming Blood Chiefs. Thought about it. But then again, that's just gain three life and draw a card, so... Oh, and remove a removal. Hmm. Very interesting. I think we go for the silencer here. I think we... I think we go for... Uh... I don't know that they'd have another... It's not eliminate. What is the other one? Uh, I can't think of it. <clears throat> let's see, let's see. I mean, they might have a Humiliate. Heartless Act. Does that do it? I think so. I think that does it. I also think I'm going to go ahead and play this down as a land, since we don't have it available to use with the Silver Quill right now. Well, we can use it later. Also, sorry for the coughs. I try to silence those to y'all nowadays, but, uh, you know. They should take my Humiliate, yeah. They're smart. I like you, Vigo. I don't like you because of that, but you're smart. Ah, uh, ah, uh, you got me. See? And there's the problem with Silver Quill. <laughs> Beautiful thing with Call, though. What are we naming? What are we naming? They've already used two Blood Chiefs. We have to remember that. I'm going for... Why does it keep saying humiliate though, right? Like, I don't have a humiliate. I'm gonna name a, a humiliate. I think the game's giving me a little tip off here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take that opportunity. Put a death touch counter on one of them. Ooh, you know, realistically, I, I just want both of them on you. You may get immediately removed. Whatever, we'll see. I went for the Heartless Act, but it has counters on it, so if it if they do have a Heartless Act, they can't destroy it anyways. They'd have to remove the counters, so. Uh-huh. Using the old noggin. I have to discard two cards? That's not fun. You you are you are no fun. I'm keeping the Mothra. You're crazy you think I'm getting rid of this big beautiful beast. Um so you know, I, whatever I'm doing, it seems to be working so far. We do have this this little weird spot where I don't want them to make me discard again, and I don't want them to look into my hand, and they seem to be pretty big fans of that so far. Destruction, hand, lookage. Stop it, all right? But they do have an Agadims, all right? And you don't play Agadims without creatures, right? <laughs> all right. Um, so I want to hit the Mothra. I don't trust them to not have that big board wipe snow ability. You know what I mean? Because they have the snow. They don't have any creatures, but I I would... Of course, if they have that, it, it you know, Mouselet doesn't protect anyways. You know, we're dropping a Mothra. Who, who am I? Who am I kidding? It's turn four, and I want to see a Mothra. I, I love this big... I was going to call it a bird, but it's a moth. <laughs> it's in the name, Chance. Let's go. Oh, I'm unstoppable this morning. Sovereign 7, 11, the gas station. Uh, we we only have two lands here. Other than that, I love it. <laughs> I can't justify keeping this. It's a fabled passage in the Malakir, right? No way. No, no. Much better. All right, much better. I want you to work, okay? I want you to work, Shadewing. I'm going to put you on the bottom. Just know that I want you on the top. All right. <laughs> oh boy. All right. So I shouldn't have played a swamp there. I was. I think I should have played the plains. I guess it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, right now, for the time being. A little village rights action. Ready to go for the silver quill here, I think. Oh, this isn't going to be fun, though. Uh, 
I mean, they could have blood chiefs, you know? I doubt it. What does the Sultai Yorian deck usually play? It's like humiliate, humiliate or Heartless Act, isn't it? I'm going for the Heartless Act again. We, we have two cards to base this off of, alright? If I hit it, I'm amazing. It's Wolf Willow. I'm not amazing. Sorry. Thought it was, but I'm not. Haha, <laughs> fooled you. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go for the additional swamp here. Just that way we can have access to village rights. Or I guess we could add access to village rights either way, but whatever. Get him! Oh man, if they have a Heartless Act, I'm gonna feel kinda, kinda good about myself. Oh, Eureka Moment! <laughs> nice! I like that card. And it makes sense in Solta. Not gonna lie, I thought about going Solta yesterday with that Simic deck. That was yesterday, right? But uh, you know, I, I can only I can only go for the top tier meta stuff so many times, you know. And you can't just keep saying, "Hey, I have a new idea," and then strap it to this super meta deck, and then be like, "Hey, look, my idea works." It's, it's just a little. It's just a little unrealistic, you know. You know, like, well, you, you kind of cheating. I'm not gonna no, okay? Just no, <laughs> no. Get them. Now what do they have? <laughs> you got a whole lot of lands, bruh. <laughs> I am happy to see that. Whenever you're facing a soul top play and you're like, <laughs> you got, you got something there. Of course, if they had an ultimatum, they can definitely afford it. You know what I mean? They can definitely afford it. And they just scribed one to the top. You hate? You hate to see that. From a soul type player, that's like uh, it's like a death sentence, really. It's, it's horrible. Alright, let's go. Sovereign Savon. I'm you know, I'm a little sad that I didn't if if I could if I could have hit Cultivate or Eureka moment. Maybe I should have done the, the scouting first before hitting the Silver Quill. Maybe we should throw in some duresses and you know, maybe be our own friends for a little bit. They don't have anything for me to take with Skyclay. That's that's the problem. I can just drop a cheeky little Alslid. Nothing else that gives one of our creatures protection from the Yorion, which might allow us to punch through for that last little bit of damage. Let's we'll just see. Yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, something that happens. It is something that happens. <laughs> How far in are we? Four and a half minutes. You know, that's, it's, it's funny, that's, it's, I know it's a control deck, right? But this control deck just won as fast as an aggro deck, which just goes to show you you don't have to play slow, one, and two. You know, control decks aren't don't necessarily mean you play long games. I think it it opens you up to playing more long games. But I think your control deck nowadays, with the amount of ramp we have in standard, yeah, you know, choose a card, any card. Hmm. I know it's about to exile everything down here. I know. But are we supposed to give them mother freaking what's his face? I don't think so. Oh, blood cheese. That's that's disheartening. That's disheartening. Blood Chiefs in a land is not what you want to see. Not when you're like, come on, I'm riding on it. You know what I mean? Because they essentially, what, what did they get there? They got rid of my board, okay. And they got rid of their board. And they put down a Yorion. And they gained some more mana. You know? 
that's you know generally when you cast an ultimatum you you want a little more so i think their choice to take the shadows verdict there might have been a little unwise but if they only had one cure best to see god and i took it out early then you know they didn't have a choice much like this bird never had a chance goodbye all right now fabled because the the game the game it's like here chance take these lands off my hand and i'm like stop it you're being too uh you're being too cruel to me right now game i need some creatures look at them they only have five left this is uh this is a soul tie now oh, call cool. <laughs> goodbye all right well you know we can expect <laughs> well we had to have one today come on we won three in a row y'all did y'all did you really did you really think we were just gonna walk in i'm gonna we gotta save that skyclave we gotta keep it back for in case whatever they play here um but yeah did you, did you think we were gonna go all day without getting one one game where we got mana screwed i'll i'll take one out of four instead of three out of three two out of two you know, five out of five. <laughs> um, all of the above. So, funny thing, funny thing. I think we get rid of that one. I don't like either of the other ones either. It's a whole lot of power and damage. And Skyclave can't take out either. But... It is just a creature now and something that doesn't do anything until later. Uh, that's disheartening. That's <laughs> that's disheartening. The Shadow's Verdict from earlier really is biting us in the ass. But, I mean, come on. If they had had a Valky or something, like it would have been GG already. I, I actually think not taking a Wolfalo and just hitting Cancel would have probably been a better play than actually taking a permanent that gives them another creature to beat me down with. Yeah, you know, at this point, oh crap! <laughs> at this point, we're living on a dream. We're living on hopes. Yeah, it's an agademes. But we got close, you know. We got close, and uh, eight, nine, actually nine of our twenty-five lands in the top fourteen cards. <laughs> Round of applause. What? Oh, summoning sickness. I was like, you really, you really don't need to hold a shark back though. Shark bait. Ooh ah. Uh. All right. So, protection from multicolor. Unfortunately, they're all monocolored. So <laughs> it's not really gonna help me out there. I mean, I think we just gotta go here, right? I'm not entirely sure what just happened there. See, I thought that I'd put a plus one, plus one counter on my Bosri's lieutenant, but in actuality, I, I did not. <laughs> All right. Let me, I think we just call this one a GG and uh, yeah, let them have it. <laughs> I... Creating the 2-2, I was going to block into the Vorinclex, but without the plus one, plus one counter, we don't get the 2-2, and... Well, I mean, sure, we could block and use Agademes to bring them back, but at this point, I'm just sad with the game, so I'm going to call it on that. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like down below, comment in the comment section what your favorite part was, and, of course, subscribe for more awesome content from yours truly. Till next time.